All right, thank you very much for staying with us. Let's shift gears and focus on climate change and gender equality. I know this is a topic where a lot of people seem to not understand how gender equality actually fits into it, but not to worry because that is what we'll focus on today. And of course, we all know climate change represents the most complex challenge of our time and it requires a concerted, proactive and holistic response. However, women and girls face a double injustice climate change and gender inequality. Yet, while they are more directly and severely impacted by climate change, women also have a unique perspective to develop uh, creative and effective solutions. How so, you ask? Well, let's find out. And of course, to help us with the conversation, we have Bernard Mossetti, who's Director of Strategy and Partnerships at Care International. Thank you very much, Bernard, for coming by today. We also have Malene Achoke, who's a co-lead climate change and resilience at Care International. Thank you very much as well for making time for us. And of course, on Zoom, We'll be joined by Dorothy Asayo, who is the Acting Assistant Country Director of Programs, that is Care International. So, of course, she'll be joining us in just a moment. But for now, let's begin with you, Bernard, because like I said earlier on, when we talk about gender, and of course, gender equality or inequality, of course, there's usually a bit of, when we're just focusing on women and girls, right? But let's get to understand what is the relationship between gender equality and climate change. Yeah, uh, thank you so much. I think first is um, to, 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 to give thanks to the viewers as well and mm -hmm. NTV for giving us this opportunity. Yeah. Uh, but to begin is that the, the, the question of climate change mm -hmm. and the climate justice mm -hmm. that we continuously seek mm -hmm. uh, in the modern times mm -hmm. has also gendered impact in mm -hmm. the sense that men and women are affected uh, invariably in different ways. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you look at agriculture, food security, mm -hmm. you look at biodiversity and ecosystems, uh, you look at energy, mm -hmm. and also you look at the question of human rights in terms mm -hmm. of climate justice and finally on water resources, mm -hmm. and the contribution in all these sectors that, make, uh, that men and women make, mm -hmm. they are different, and mm -hmm. therefore they are affected differently. Okay. And if we are to make any uh, mm -hmm. contribution positively towards mm -hmm. you know, uh, climate change and its impacts, mm -hmm. and then the women become at the center uh, mm. of, of finding solutions. Okay. Yeah. Can we just get to understand how exactly they are affected before we come back to, again, why we're advocating on, you yeah. know, the role that actually gender equality uh, plays as far as climate change is concerned. Uh, because I'm pretty sure there's someone who's watching and thinking, yeah, but I mean, we still live under the same sun, <laughs> right? Yes. All of, almost all of us. Yes. But mostly the discussion is towards women and girls who are mostly affected. affected. So how exactly, just to paint that picture for our audience? Uh, I'll, I'll give you one example. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, the question of agriculture and food security. Yeah. If you look at the food security, there are around four components. Mm -hmm. There is food uh, availability, food accessibility, food utilization, and mm -hmm. food systems. Okay. Uh, statistics have shown that mm -hmm. people who continuously produce food and engage in agricultural work, mm -hmm. around 90% is women. Mm -hmm. And what that means then when you have impact of climate change mm -hmm. interfering with the production, mm -hmm. say, of food, mm -hmm. it is women who are affected. Okay. And what that tells you, they are unable to get harvests, mm -hmm. which translate to food and income mm -hmm. and therefore they are continuously negatively impacted. Yeah. Look at land for instance, mm -hmm. only 1% of Kenyan women on, on land, land, isn't That's it? True. And yeah. what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Increasingly then their source of livelihood mm -hmm. is being egged out of them. Mm -hmm. And if then we don't reverse those, uh, we don't reverse those negative impacts of mm -hmm. climate change. Mm -hmm. uh, women suffer vulnerabilities mm -hmm. that are in disproportionate mm -hmm. to men. Okay. What about the men? Do you want to take that? The men. How exactly are the men affected by this? So that they do not feel left out <laughs> of of the conversation. 
Um, thank you. So mm -hmm. climate change, uh, we always say, uh, same sky, different impacts. True. And this is because men and women are affected differently, differently. girls and boys. Mm. And this is because of the different roles we play in the society mm. and the different needs that we have. Mm. So for instance, uh, in terms of droughts, um, men are affected more because in terms of uh, taking the herds, uh, doing the long, long walks distances. and all that, looking for green pasture and all mm. that. But women, um, looking at the role, that the societal roles that women are like given to do like the home care role mm -hmm. to ensure that a family is running there is food there is water mm -hmm. there is firewood um, mm -hmm. there is energy mm -hmm. maybe clean energy that is what we are advocating for mm -hmm. so they have to do extra and sometimes um, in areas where there is a lot of issues to do with water scarcity some girls have to drop out of to, out of school sure. to assist their parents to mm -hmm. go and fetch water because uh, just one person cannot bring enough water for like five people True. so um, Yes, girls and boys also, it affects them in terms of dropping out of school because mm -hmm. of um, uh, other roles of having to support their parents, mm -hmm. you know, with some of these chores. Mm -hmm. But also uh, with women, of course, like, like, like Bernard said, um, mm -hmm. the natural, the way society looks at women and the role that women are supposed to play, mm -hmm. uh, we affected more. But if you look at the GDP of Kenya, 26% mm -hmm. of that is supported by agriculture. Mm -hmm. And women play a big role in agriculture. So yeah. that shows us uh, the important role of women in terms of agriculture and food security and food production. Mm -hmm. So climate change um, makes all these impacts worse. Mm -hmm. It makes the situation get worse. So mm -hmm. um, we say the, the climate change uh, makes gender inequality and mm -hmm. other inequalities worse. Mm -hmm. So we do have other inequalities like poverty, mm -hmm. literacy levels, yes. employment, uh, ownership of land and mm -hmm. others. Mm -hmm. So with climate change, it makes all this worse because of it exacerbates and um, makes a uh, <coughs> need for others, to, for people to do more. Mm. Uh, <coughs> climate change affects um, all the sectors right now. No mm. sector is immune from Spared. climate change, starting from even health, uh, transport, infrastructure, and all that. Mm -hmm. So um, it makes, so if we're doing infrastructure, you have to do like um, climate proofing and all that. That means more resources. Yes. In terms of uh, um, agriculture, water security, it means uh, more innovative solutions mm -hmm. to be able to um, tackle the impacts of climate change. Mm -hmm. Especially for Kenya, we're talking about droughts mm -hmm. and floods because mm -hmm. those are the key impacts that we see, we are, we're starting to see uh, issues to do with the heat waves mm -hmm. in terms of health and all yes. that. So it makes um, already inequalities that are there more Mm. Wow. It's true. It's true. And you see, majority of the times so when we talk about like climate change, we tend to focus on what is the government doing? What is, you know, the bodies that are responsible for the same? What are they doing to make sure that we reverse this? But we don't really, treat, um, you know, focus on ourselves. What can we do to also bring about the change that is needed? So then again, why are we then advocating more about gender um, quality or equality when it comes to climate actions? Yeah, I, I think that there are also quite a number of reasons. Wha mm -hmm. One of it is that uh, when you look at, at the inequalities itself, mm -hmm. uh, globally, regionally, and even in the country, mm -hmm. um, first of all, at the global level, mm -hmm. uh, you know, developed countries are not playing uh, to what they're supposed to do in mm -hmm. terms of helping in adaptation and mitigation <coughs> when mm -hmm. it comes to climate change. Mm -hmm. That is one. But two, even uh, there are inequalities involved at the regional and at the continental and the country level. Mm. But what is important for us to know is mm -hmm. that women constitute majority of the population. Yes. And statistics have shown that they are the most hard hit in terms of poverty. Mm. And if that is true then, mm -hmm. what it means every other, um, every other climate related shocks mm. are not absorbed as much, I mean, I do not have much shock absorbers when mm -hmm. it comes to women as related to men. Mm -hmm. So interestingly, when you see at the position of decision making, when it comes to issues we have talked about what we are doing, mm -hmm. uh, in, when it comes to positions of decision making, mm -hmm. and who is being included, and who is providing solutions, mm -hmm. uh, v you know, all these climate action plans and policies mm -hmm. have shown that women 
are not at the center mm. and therefore their expertise in terms of knowledge on how you can combat climate change mm. is not taken into consideration okay. and therefore it's increasingly becoming important that women are given the driver's seat mm. in terms of ensuring that their views are gotten on board mm. that is one their knowledge and expertise are also included mm -hmm. and also in terms of acceptability of the solutions yeah. remember uh, women engage much more in natural resources activities than men mm -hmm. when it comes to production mm -hmm. and the knowledge and expertise that they have mm -hmm. are, are actually considered as actors and drivers of change when mm -hmm. it comes mm -hmm. to providing solutions to, 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 things, to yeah. all these uh, mm -hmm. climate change effects that yeah. we are talking about. Yeah. So increasingly whether, whether you look at it from all these areas that you're talking about, mm -hmm. including technology, mm -hmm. you know, the acceptability of clean technology and clean energy and renewable energy Mostly must by include women. women. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So then understanding the importance of women in all this, right? Why is it that still <laughs> they are not included in as much as, of course, they are at the center. They have all, um, you know, like they're creative in terms of then mitigating some of the effects that is brought about by climate change. But still, years later, women are not included. Why is that? Yeah, um, these are the discussions that we usually have even at the global climate conference. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of these um, decisions have to start at the national level. Yeah. Because um, at the decision making, high level decision making um, uh, conferences, we send representatives from key departments to represent our countries. Mm -hmm. And so if we, first of all, if we don't have women leadership mm -hmm. in these key roles, mm -hmm. that means they will first of all miss out. Yes. In, um, sitting in that table of mm. decision making because they are not taking leadership roles mm. or positions starting at the national level. Okay. And that is why we see, um, even when we at this um, big con climate conference in terms mm. of decision making, mm. we find that 70% of the attendees and the negotiators are men. Mm. And um, this is where then um, we find that most of the key decisions that um, uh, women are supposed to be part of in terms of saying, okay, this technology is good, mm. but um, from our experience, we can improve it this way mm -hmm. to ensure that it meets the needs of the women at the local level, mm. the, the needs of the girls at the local level. This is usually missing. Mm. Another aspect is that when we do our programs, we do not include our gender budgets, like mm. budgets that directly go into empowering women and girls, okay. like our projects that speak directly to training and empowering women and girls on their key role mm -hmm. in terms of climate change, mm -hmm. because first of all, our communities need to understand what is climate change, mm -hmm. how is it impacting them, mm -hmm. and what can they do, because um, we all of us have a role to play in terms mm -hmm. of climate change, mm -hmm. but of course, um, we always hold the rich, the developed countries more responsible, because they mm -hmm. contribute to this problem by uh, developing through the use of um, dirty energy, that is coal. Yeah. And right now in this climate negotiations, we want to, we are transforming uh, mm -hmm. from uh, coal energy to clean energy. So they have a role to support developing countries mm -hmm. to adapt and build the resilience to climate change by providing finance. Mm -hmm. So some of these finances, they are not also targeted directly to women-led institutions mm -hmm. or women-led um, organizations. Mm -hmm. We are we adv advocating for directly as resources to target our women mm -hmm. locally led organizations mm -hmm. to build their capacity mm -hmm. and give them an opportunity to be able to make decisions within that community area where they're working mm -hmm. and coming up with innovative uh, projects and programs that uh, really speak to their needs. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about climate change and um, locally led adaptation initiatives, mm -hmm. this is where we want to see like women and girls and boys, even men, taking lead in terms of coming up with activities that they want to implement. So if you want to implement a project in Marsabit, in Garissa, any part of the country that wants to address climate change, mm. very important to speak to these people at the local level. Okay. And, and here we are always emphasizing to have women and girls as well to mm. tell you this is the problem mm. and this is how we can solve it. Okay. You'd think what is a problem in a certain community, but that is not their priority. True. They have another issue maybe that they would like to address uh, maybe a market uh, on how they can sell their produce, mm -hmm. how they can get their produce to the market on time before they get spoiled. Mm. So um, these are the gaps that we have that still mm. 
we have not been able to efficiently mm -hmm. involve women in this kind of negotiations. Mm -hmm. But we are making progress. We're not saying that nothing has yeah, been done. Has <laughs> um, we cannot say all the work we are doing is going down the drain. Yeah. But uh, we are making, we, can, we are seeing progress. We are seeing, um, like Rwanda in, mm -hmm. in African countries, it's among the leading African countries in terms of Absolutely. Um, in incorporating women in their leadership and mm -hmm. other initiatives. Mm -hmm. Uh, for us in Kenya, we saw how long it took the two-thirds gender rule to go Absolutely. through. Absolutely. And still, uh, still even a problem. Still, still a problem, problem. Yes. as much as we do have the, the policy. Mm. So it's an issue also of um, culture and uh, how we portray this. Mm. But also we need to deliberately and uh, intentionally want to have women at the, at the center of decision making. Mm. So at the county level, we need to have women uh, uh, at least sitting in some of these key community co committees yeah. on environment mm -hmm. at the world level, at the national level, at the at the parliament level. Because mm -hmm. when we are talking about climate change, it starts at the local level. Yes. And I was then about the, to ask the same. Yeah. When it comes then to there are the um, different level, stages yes. that link to the global level. So mm -hmm. if they are missing from the world go at the community level, mm -hmm. they will definitely miss at the global level where the decisions are being made. Absolutely. Very quickly before we go to Dorothy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I, can I add just a uh, sure. num number of couple of points? Mm. Uh, number one is that we at Care Kenya mm. has realized that this has been a problem and we have put a you know, gender equality framework mm. as a central pillar towards our whole programming mm -hmm. such that you continuously ensure uh, that um, gender and women equality, mm -hmm. uh, you know, gender equality mm -hmm. and women girls are at the center, at the heart of our programming. Mm -hmm. But specifically to your question mm -hmm. is, um, there's a question of building local movements who are like mm -hmm. a feminist yeah. and start appreciating mm -hmm. uh, the role of environment and the role of climate change, mm -hmm. uh, how it impacts their lives. And okay. it's by so doing, beginning at the grassroots, and initiating change from below. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you carry women and girls from that level uh, to the yeah. national, yeah. national, regional, and even at the global level. Mm -hmm. My colleague talked about gender budgeting, but mm -hmm. world sampling, then there's a need of a comprehensive gender analysis that mm -hmm. gives you uh, sex disaggregated data to inform action planning mm. and programming mm. and all these issues around policy mm -hmm. and there's also lack of appreciation when it comes to policy makers mm. and uh, you know players in climate change on indigenous knowledge system mm. and I think there needs to be that recognition that the role of indigenous knowledge system it mm. can play in continuously preserving the environment the mm. biodiversity and the ecosystems mm -hmm. uh, you know the, 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 the ecological anthropology of various communities is mm -hmm. very key mm -hmm. in, in terms of that mm -hmm. um, and, and lastly two, two key points mm -hmm. I think as development actors, we need to start thinking about, in the words of uh, Robert Chambers, putting mm -hmm. the last first. Mm -hmm. uh, if women have been relegated for quite some time now, how do we get them to be the first in all our, our action mm -hmm. of development? And lastly, is how do we do our policies? Uh, the problem in doing our mm -hmm. policies is that pro poor policies mm -hmm. are always bad policies. True, uh, true. And, 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 and we have never gotten how uh, the problem with our pro poor policies is that they are bad policies and mm. we have never gotten how these policies can really start driving change because mm. policies in and in itself without implementation and changing lives uh, is not really yeah. uh, what it should be. Yeah and of course in the country we, we have a very big problem especially when it comes to implementing these policies that we keep talking about in boardrooms <laughs> in you know these meetings all those policies are in place but then again implementation is where the big problem is and of course we all know that's Kenya International of course you're very big on advocacy and all those things so what exactly are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> as being part of the change because you've done some bit of work right really yeah. really good work but of course like we always say more needs to be done again to make sure that we all include these people let's speak to Dorothy um I'd say right about now Dorothy again thank you very much for joining us in the conversation via zoom uh but then again the question of culture and especially right here in the country because we hear a lot of yeah women have been overly empowered this girl child you know they have been overly empowered but then again still we notice in some certain areas that again still the women and girls actually still lag behind when it comes to being part of these conversations that need um, you know to be had so when it comes to culture do you feel culture is one of the biggest barriers when it comes to tackling climate change um, thank you very much and uh, happy to um, be able to connect and contribute to this conversation. Uh, as uh, you've indicated, my name is Dorothy Aseo and I'm the Assistant uh, Country Director, uh, Programs Care International. So um, 
there are quite um, a, a structural and systemic barriers that actually women face in mm. terms of uh, climate action. Mm -hmm. And uh, this actually stem from the patriarchal systems that actually our society is structured mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. So women actually um, have faced uh, those barriers and uh, most of them come in terms of um, uh, access, control, and ownership of uh, reproductive resources that actually could help them to even support uh, climate action and be able to even build resilience and uh, uh, um, um, uh, and productive um, uh, mitigation as uh, uh, structural uh, processes to be able to um, uh, tackle uh, climate uh, injustice and uh, even the gender inequalities that come out of uh, climate uh, injustice. Mm. I right. want to also mention that um, uh, um, unpaid care work actually that comes in because of uh, all the, uh, uh, the workload and even the time poverty that mm -hmm. comes with um, the roles and uh, responsibilities that uh, women, girls, and even young people are mm -hmm. actually uh, supporting their different uh, um, uh, 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 support in, within their, their structural uh, organizations in their communities. Mm -hmm puts them at, a, at, at already a disadvantage. But uh, this is something that uh, we are working to really uh, uh, turn it around and work to the advantage of these particular um, um, a com a target groups in our communities. For example, Care International um, works on um, uh, changing um, social norms and uh, gender norms and power relations. Mm. And this is through our models that actually recognize that we need to have reflective dialogues. We need to have actually very, very clear mm. uh, underlining um, uh, processes that can be able to deduce those uh, norms uh, uh, that are actually are able to continually sustain uh, these particular uh, barriers, but at the end of the day, we are using them to be able to now change around and have them addressed to be able to support climate action. Mm -hmm. Apart from um, uh, issues to do with the unpaid care work that comes with the issue of uh, uh, lack of uh, very clear um, um, uh, recognition, uh, redistribution, and reallocation of roles and responsibilities within our setups to allow that uh, uh, optimal participation Special of women, girls, and young people mm -hmm. in climate action. We also have uh, uh, issues to do with um, 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 access, control, and uh, ownership of resources. And uh, this is something that also we are using our approaches in our programming to ensure that women are able to build their agency, mm -hmm. are able to build also relationships that will allow them to access, control, and own those uh, resources that can be able to uh, enable them to tackle the structural and systemic barriers mm -hmm. that inhibit them to really fully participate or uh, uh, action uh, issues around uh, climate uh, change. Mm -hmm. And uh, lastly, uh, we've been able also to invest heavily in terms of uh, our um, advocacy and uh, bringing the voice actually at uh, the different spaces that can be able to really showcase the work that actually women are also doing in climate action. Because at the end of the day, mm -hmm. if the voice is not there, then it becomes difficult for us even to demonstrate some of the traction that we've had. Therefore, her telling her story, her story is very important to be told. And this is an area that actually we are using to demystify also some of those barriers that come in in terms of uh, women uh, and uh, young people and also girls in terms of uh, uh, climate action. Therefore, these are some of the approaches that I will just point out that care will be very, very deliberate at ensuring that uh, we are addressing the barriers that actually are more structural and systemic in terms of uh, supporting climate action, addressing climate injustice and uh, the gender inequality that comes out of that. Mm. Thank you. And I like the fact that you mentioned more about patriarchal society and of course again the society that we have lived in we're living it and most likely that not maybe we'll continue living in the same right so do you face maybe a bit of resistance and especially when it comes to dialogue in terms of just resetting and changing um the view as far as women and girls are concerned dorothy do you want to take that or do you want to take that yeah. okay before, mm -hmm. before Marlene before comes mm -hmm. in uh, and appreciating uh, what Dorothy has said, mm -hmm. uh, there's also another angle that we need to look at culture. Mm -hmm. You know, culture is an accelerator to development as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. uh, we all come from communities where we grew up and we were told these are sacred fruits, these are sacred trees. Mm -hmm. And we coexisted with the environment within that ecology. Mm -hmm. And I think 
getting that knowledge mm -hmm. is very important mm -hmm. in terms of combating climate change. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, talk about the shrines at the coast, mm -hmm. uh, you know, how they have coexisted. That's talk about tent. the communities yeah. that continue to live with forest and mm -hmm. coexist, the Ogiex and the Endoroids. Mm -hmm. How do we tap into that expertise and continuously mm -hmm. uh, use that? So I wanted to point out, yes, mm -hmm. culture can be an impediment, but can also, also be, be an accelerator like to that. development. Yeah, positively. it's just about then how we see, yes. how we see things. Thanks. All right, so can you answer that in like 30 seconds? But we need to take a break because I want you to emphasize more as far as the resistance is concerned and how you deal with the same. Because again, like I said, when it comes to culture, there's some things that are deeply engraved in us that we're like, no, this is how we do things. This is how we see things. So then how do we change that to make sure that then again, it is to our own advantage? all of us as far as then, um, you know, managing especially cases of the climate change. So how about we take a break? But of course, when we come back, it's more on the role of women in a transformative climate action. You do not want to miss the second part of this discussion. Stay with us. This is your world. Renew your subscription today for just 299 shillings per month on your Tabuke to catch Nia. Monday to Friday at 8 p.m. exclusively on Star Times Rainbow TV, channel 113 on Aerial Decoder and 484 on Satellite. Rainbow TV, home of Kenyan entertainment. Burgers for six. Did you say six? Uh -huh. Your favorite moment. Now your favorite ice cream. It's so good. Order what you want. To select what you want. Order it now. Download the app, order a Glovo, and we get it. Ding dong, Glovo! At the first sign of pain, you need a solution that you can trust. Try Panadol Advance. With Panadol's Optizod formula, the tablet absorbs quickly and starts providing fast and effective pain relief you can trust. Try Panadol Advance. I'm growing up, I'm growing into every moment. Thanks, Thanks Mom. Mom. <laughs> so Nurture the moment with Minute Maid Delight. Now available in tropical, orange, mango and apple flavors. From now on, if you want to talk to me about our child, you communicate it through him. You won't come to the home or any family events. Come on, I'm family. Family doesn't do what you did to us. Bob. And another thing. Please, do not ever mention my name again. Tell her on a tissue. I don't know do. I don't want to call you daughter for your job. I don't want to call Get peace of mind and protect the ones you love with the power of Dettol Bar Soap. It cleans and protects from up to 100 illness-causing germs. So no matter what type of mum you are, trust Dettol.
All right, thank you very much for staying with us. The conversation is all about the role of women in a transformative climate action. And of course, we're joined by an amazing team from K International just to help us understand why gender equality is very, very important and very pertinent, really, as far as mitigating the effect of climate change. Because what we all know is that women and children, <coughs> excuse me, are 14 times more likely than men to suffer direct impacts. And this is of natural disasters and climate change as well. So then what can we do to make sure that we we protect these vulnerable people and that does not say that we forget about the men okay it's an inclusive approach towards making sure that again we combat the effects of climate change but before we went on a break of course we want to wanted to understand fine dialogue absolutely important and it's very very necessary right but then again do you face some sort of resistance when it comes to then just including the men in also having these conversations on how important it is for women to be included in you know this fight Thank you for that uh, interesting mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, to change how community have been doing things for over 50 years mm -hmm. is not something that can be done in one year, two year. It True. takes time because uh, for the old men, for instance, because we're talking about the patriarchal society, mm -hmm. they need to see the reason why they need to involve their women in decision making, mm -hmm. why they need to allow their women to own land, mm -hmm. why they need their women, you know, to do be a part and parcel of these big things that um, the society thinks that it is supposed to be role for men. men. Yeah. So it takes time, but uh, as K International, we do have a number of tools and strategies we use mm -hmm. um, to try and change or see these uh, different um, key issues that we want to see. So when we are doing our implementation of a program, we mm -hmm. do have like a tool that is called a capacity vulnerability and capacity assessment tool, okay. whereby we use this to first of all understand what, what is this society all about? Mm -hmm. What are their traditions like? Mm -hmm. What are their cultures? Mm -hmm. How are women perceived? Mm -hmm. What are their roles? Mm -hmm. And then after that, then uh, we, we design trainings that focus on men okay. alone, yes. focus on women alone, okay. so that they can air their views are easily, mm -hmm. you know, be, 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 without feeling... Um, uh, what if I say exactly. this, then you will see this. Yeah, yeah. so that okay. you can understand from the point of view, what, what are the needs, what are the challenges mm -hmm. from, from the men as well, and yeah. the youth as well. Mm -hmm. And then at, after that, we usually have like a, where we bring all of them again together, because mm -hmm. again, we want to be able to speak to each other. Yeah. So we use some of these different tools just to, to ensure that a lot of training is being done, mm -hmm. a lot of evidence-based advocacy is being done to show really why it's important for women to participate uh, in key award mm -hmm. level uh, climate change uh, meetings, mm -hmm. climate change committee meetings, climate mm -hmm. change um, programs. Mm -hmm. And this is because of one the reasons that we've talked about that they have the knowledge and they can contribute immensely mm -hmm. in uh, providing solutions to some of the impacts of climate change that um, women really do know the needs in terms of uh, innovative technology that we want to use, mm -hmm. in terms of projects that really speak to their needs, mm -hmm. in terms of um, F food chain or value chains or markets, what do they need for them to be able to reach their produce to a certain level? Mm. So there is resistance. It takes time to change this, just like how we do FGM. It mm. takes time. Yes. And how you see that they speak to old men differently, mm. to the old women, to mm. all of the people, mm -hmm. to try and tell them that, yes, these things we used to them at the past, but right now mm. it is not helping us to move to this level what we, where we want to see. Yeah. We're talking about sustainable development goals. We're mm -hmm. talking about future generation. Mm -hmm. We're talking about um, Agenda 26 63, you know, the different initiatives yeah. at the national, regional, mm -hmm. and global. Mm -hmm. But uh, that said, mm -hmm. there is need for political goodwill yeah. that would really mm -hmm. be able to help us move to the next level. Mm -hmm. When we see politicians um, speaking about this strongly, like we know how mm -hmm. Kenya has been very... Um, 
are vocal in climate uh, talks. Yeah. And currently, our president is the chair of the committee of um, the African leaders on climate change. Mm. And this needs to be scaled down to the national, to the county level and the community level, whereby we are seeing leaders taking mm. a role in uh, advocating for women are roles in these spaces mm -hmm. because through that also most of our communities do or would be influenced by what our leaders say, mm -hmm. what our leaders do. So we also need the political goodwill mm -hmm. to help us to move these uh, discussions to where we want to see. Mm -hmm. But of course, as um, care and working with like-minded institutions, mm -hmm. we are really trying to first of all train and uh, for people to understand what are the key challenges and how can they be able to solve the problems that they have with their communities mm -hmm. and uh, what is needed. So once you're able to build a case, and to show them, by the way, if you include uh, women and girls and youth, even mm. men in this conversation, in this process, it's easier, it's easier whereby mm. you're all talking to each other mm -hmm. so that you don't budget just for the men yeah. and leaving out uh, the, the, the women, women and the girls. Yes. We'll come back to the budgeting issue, yeah. uh, you know, because again, it's not only a problem as far as then mitigating climate change, but also it's so many other areas, especially right here yeah. <laughs> in our country. So, of course, again, what needs to be done? But then again, so fine, understanding how important, um, and I'd want Dorothy to take this in terms of understanding the importance of participation, especially when it comes to women and girls, and even the young people, um, into climate change and climate action. So then again, what exactly is expected of this women? Because I think earlier on we started by saying sometimes it's the women who are not taking up these roles. They're not taking up this, um, you know, positions, making sure that they're also on the table in terms of discussions and all those things. So what exactly then is expected? So suppose we have these women on the table, right? What exactly is expected of them to make sure that we bring change? Dorothy, can you hear me? Okay, but now do you want to take that as we sort out Dorothy? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, just to, to, to take it from where Malin left as well. So mm -hmm. you are working with a knowledge, attitude and practice issue, with mm -hmm. the social change issues and it will take time. Mm -hmm. So quite a number of approaches then need to be engaged, mm -hmm. you know, including creating a champion, a main champions mm -hmm. and influencers mm -hmm. who then becomes as a positive role model to the other men okay. to see that really they can start involving women. Mm -hmm. uh, having a very care, uh, a curriculum or a module on engaging men and boys mm -hmm. in women initiatives mm -hmm. or girls uh, initiatives and creating those safe spaces mm -hmm. first for women and girls to talk mm -hmm. but also create a safe space for me when yes. I champion the cause for women mm -hmm. then I'm also safe in the yeah. context of those other of us men mm -hmm. who will not want that uh, you know cause to be championed mm -hmm. but finally is that as you say women will have to take lead mm -hmm. so when they finally take lead what are mm -hmm. they supposed to do yeah I'll give you um, uh, an example mm -hmm. Uh, and this happens in what, for example, let's go to the political cycle now, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. in terms of coalitions. Yeah. The coalitions that we are seeing mm -hmm. is made up of men. Mm -hmm. I'm here to see coalitions that is bringing women, women together. and to counter and become an alternative to these coalitions in politics that we are seeking. Mm -hmm. So it is going to be very important mm -hmm. for women first to coalesce among themselves mm -hmm. and produce an alternative voices mm -hmm. to what is being brought forth by women. It is going to be very, but by men, it's yeah. going to be very important mm -hmm. for women to come up with evidence based research, uh, you know, backed up evidences mm -hmm. on the table and say, you know mm -hmm. what, this is what you are proposing, mm -hmm. but from where we are sitting, we are greatly impacted, and this is what we think will work. Mm -hmm. It is going to take women to form local movements themselves and mm -hmm. start agitating from mm -hmm. the local level up to the global level mm -hmm. on what impacts them as, yeah. as uh, you know, as, 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 as women. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, these spaces where they reach, mm. first, when they are in those spaces, mm -hmm. they need to speak up. Okay. We have been given examples before of mm. where these spaces have been provided, mm. but then uh, um, they haven't been able to bring forth on what is supposed to be done. Mm. And remember, the process of you getting to this table mm. is as important as being on that table. True. So if you are going to get on this table, mm. not through merit, Mm -hmm. and you're going to get through favoritism, mm -hmm. just like men and women, mm -hmm. then on that table you're not able, you're not able to, to say what you really want. True. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think increasingly then it's going to be important in terms of resources, mm -hmm. agitating for resources to continuously ensure 
that uh, women needs mm. are catered for. Mm. Because then without resources, if you are only going to talk about representation, mm. just because two thirds gender rule, mm. you have three women mm. out of five, so mm. then that is okay. Mm. I think it also comes with the quality, mm. but we all agree having numbers first is a good thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you also want to chime in to the same? Because now this, this puts us, you know, it's like there's work to do, <laughs> right, as yeah. women. And also, it's, it's, it's one of the things that we also hear a lot in terms of, ah, these women just wanted to be given things, right? It's like, here, Sawa, you can have it since you're all crying about hashtag me too, hashtag, you know. Then again, when you have that opportunity to jump onto the role, then you do not want to do it. So is it then a matter of self-stigma amongst the women in that, ah, me, I'm not able to do that, or oh, I'm not. People will judge me. Do you think that is the case? That is why most of these women are not ready or not willing to jump into these opportunities that are presented to them. Yeah, uh, you know, when you talk about gender equality and women participation, it's not yeah. about um, saying that men and women are the same, <laughs> but having access to resources mm -hmm. to uh, that promote a development or growth of men and women in different sectors. Yeah. You know. So, um, and also uh, women participation is not just about numbers. You might have a lot of women sitting on a table, but like Bernard said, if they are not, um, they don't have their rights um, by, if it's not by merit, but by favorism, mm -hmm. then uh, we are not able to move our agenda to the next level. Absolutely. So we yeah. do have a lot of women who have the uh, capacity that we need to mm -hmm. be able to sit in this um key uh, committees that we're talking about, mm. parliamentary positions, mm. uh, being a country director, you know, mm. being the head, the chief of party. Mm -hmm. We do have a number of women who really have those skills. Yeah. And uh, we are not short of that. Mm -hmm. So um, we need to be able to start um, giving, not really giving them, but uh, providing an enabling environment whereby they can, they can be up. able to apply for this role mm. and uh, actually get them. Mm. So you can see when some institutions are call for are call for applications, they'd say women are highly um, encouraged to, to apply. apply. This is a good enabling environment because um, it's not that it will be favorizing, mm. but it is open to have a woman taking mm. up that uh, position. Mm -hmm. But uh, that said, uh, in our care gender equality framework, mm. uh, we talk about um, building confidence mm. of the people that we want to take up this uh, leadership position. Yeah. So they are, depending on how we have been brought up and the society where we have grown, mm. uh, we also need to build um, confidence of women to speak. You need to know what you're supposed to speak about. Mm -hmm. That means you need knowledge, you need mm -hmm. to be trained, you need to understand the context. If you want to be, to be um, in business, you need to understand what are the dynamics. Mm -hmm. If it's climate change, you need to know what, is, what are the dynamics, what are the context, and what is needed. Mm -hmm. You know, because you'll be a spokesperson mm -hmm. for a number of women. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it's important to build confidence, mm -hmm. to, ha to train uh, people to know what they need. What, first of all, they need to know what do, what do I need, you know, mm -hmm. um, as a woman in this context for me to be able to uh, be able to build my capacity and resilience to climate change. Mm -hmm. uh, what resources are you providing for them to do this? Mm -hmm. Um, are there projects or initiatives that are directly targeting uh, mm -hmm. these groups? Mm -hmm. So in that way, then we are able to build resilience. You, you've seen a lot of uh, groups doing a training for women uh, politicians, you know, mm -hmm. before they take up the nominations and all that. Why is mm -hmm. that? So to build their resilience and to tell them, you know what, mm -hmm. you have a big role to play in this yeah. position. So mm -hmm. if you take it, please uh, ensure that you're speaking on behalf of your people mm -hmm. and uh, ensuring that the local needs are actually uh, getting to the table whereby... Um, they are being featured in the national policies, mm -hmm. in the national uh, climate change action plans, mm -hmm. because these are the uh, plans that are being uh, financed for implementation. Mm -hmm. So if some of these key needs are missing in these mm -hmm. key national policies, national action plans, county action plans, ward mm -hmm. action plans, mm -hmm. then that means uh, they'll be missing um, in terms of implementation because it will not be budgeted for. True, yeah. true. You're very keen on budgeting and budgeting, what, but not before what? I come to you, can I just speak to Dorothy in just a moment? As far as then, what more can CARE do? This is as far as then promoting a more diverse, inclusive and equitable world. What would you say? Much. I think that is a very, very important um, um, aspect of ensuring equity. Mm. 
remember it is one thing actually to have actually being diverse is uh, a guarantee mm. but being inclusive mm. takes an effort yeah we are all diverse mm. in the way actually we are all structured mm. in the society but mm. inclusion is upon us to ensure that actually we've invited mm. uh, uh, people on the table mm. and actually we are engaging and involving them meaningfully mm. I would want to emphasize one point around intersectionality. Mm. It is very important to know, to know that actually we, we, we are not a homogeneous mm. group, or rather we are not working with homogeneous sets of either women, or young men. people, or mm -hmm. children, or even engaging men. Therefore, mm. it is important to look at what are the other intersecting factors that actually will allow or even um, um, encourage or even enable uh, further inclusion or even maybe perpetuate exclusion? Mm -hmm. Therefore, as we look at that, are we looking at issues to do with even age? Are we looking at issues to do with disability, mm -hmm. issues to do with illiteracy, mm -hmm. issues to do with even um, economic um, um, uh, life empowerment? Mm -hmm. What are other things that are coming in even in in terms of intergenerational gaps that yeah. actually can allow or not in terms of inclusion mm -hmm. therefore the as this 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 um aspect of equity has to be brought on board together with a very keen lens around intersectionality we cannot run away from that particular mm -hmm. um, um a component and um we really, to, we really need to uh, encourage a lot of uh, intersectionality to allow inclusion and uh, issues to do with meaningful engagement and participation. Mm. Uh, to emphasize what CARE actually is also doing around uh, uh, a more uh, gender equal and um, um, uh, inclusive uh, uh, world, we also want to recognize that um, engaging men and boys is very critical. Mm -hmm. If we really want to make a lot of headways around uh, um, uh, equity and uh, gender equality, men also need actually to be engaged and be brought on the table in terms of how they can even be our champions, they can be even be advocates, mm -hmm. they can be able to also change their own um, and, uh, and norms, uh, social uh, practices, and even power relations, because it's about power. It's mm -hmm. about power, and uh, we need to recognize exactly mm -hmm. the power within, the power over, the power to, and how we can use that actually to be able to encourage and, pro and uh, support a more gender equal world. Therefore, those are uh, areas that I would really want to uh, encourage all the partners, the stakeholders, that as much as we are working on aspects to do with them, uh, inclusion. Mm. Let's also look at the intersectionality that comes with that. Mm. Let's look at the intergenerational issues. Mm. We don't want actually a world that is divided in terms of our intergenerational aspects. Mm -hmm. And let's also uh, uh, um, invest more in engaging men and boys in mm. this conversation around gender equality. I love Thank that. You. I love that because I think the resistance usually comes in when one gender, if I can say, feels left out because like focusing on one gender and then, you know, the men are like, aye, but this is where are we, where are we at? All right, Vanadi wanted to also chime on the same. Yeah, yeah very quickly. Mm. Uh, and I think is, th there is this understanding mm -hmm. uh, and is brought about by our socialization and patriarchy. Mm. Uh, our women and girls are judged harshly by our society. Absolutely. And that's a fact. Absolutely. If mm. I'm given the same job as you, if I was in your seat, mm. after this show, mm. you will be judged more harshly if I was to do the same show with mm. you, uh, just because the society places very high moral standards uh, to women, women and girls, mm. you know, informed by patriarchy and our socialization. Mm. And that's why you continuously have cancer of elders mm. who are men and you wonder whether you cannot have cancer of elders who are women, women. or they don't get old for that <laughs> matter. Uh, so I w that, trying just to contextualize what uh, we were talking, uh, the, 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 what we were talking some time back about mm. why then are women, what is expected of women when mm. they come on the table? Mm -hmm. The difference is that you are judged more harshly mm. th than I'm judged. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to inequality, mm -hmm. just to broaden the conversation, mm. um, I think we have inequality spread around the broad spectrum of public service delivery. Absolutely. You mm -hmm. talk about health, you talk about education, you mm -hmm. talk about transport, mm -hmm. and now the question of debt. Mm. And these inequalities, when you look at them wholesomely and try to 
situate where climate change is, mm. these are some of the drivers, uh, uh, Marlene, that you mm. want to see that really if you are to work on public service delivery, uh, you know, bring that uh, gap mm -hmm. uh, much closer, mm -hmm. uh, then you will have actually solved all of the problems of mm -hmm. climate change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. I strongly feel, you know, the developed countries mm -hmm. and continuously contribute mm -hmm. some of the things that uh, we are talking about climate change at a very high level and are not playing at their games. And that is another aspect of inequality. Mm -hmm. And lastly, it's about the rich, you know, and the wealth in the world mm -hmm. who are very few, mm -hmm. but at the same time... Have so much power. Have so much. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, I think wealth distribution and starting to call the wealth out and mm -hmm. starting them to share their wealth, mm -hmm. it will be very much important as well, yeah. even as we work on public service delivery yeah. inequalities. Yeah, <laughs> wealth distribution. Yes. Quite a conversation that's, again, of course, there's a lot of resistance, but it's not a conversation that, you know, we cannot have, we really need to have it. Okay, literally three minutes to, to wind up the show, but I also want to understand, to, to talk about the fact that, fine, so we understand all those challenges. We understand um, that things need to be done. But then again, so when it comes to forging ahead, right, what's of these transformative partnerships that, again, CARE is looking into, just to make sure that then we have, you know, this conversation not only here, but also in so many other levels. Very briefly, and then I'll take your part in short. So in terms of partnerships, our care is very keen to work with like-minded institutions mm -hmm. who are promoting gender equality mm -hmm. in, the, in uh, all our programming and also in their programming because mm -hmm. we also need to work with like-minded people to mm -hmm. be able to achieve a vision that we want to see mm -hmm. in terms of eradicating poverty. And through that, you have to be able to involve our women, our gender in your programs to, to break the barriers mm -hmm. and to break the bias, you know? of how yes. we perceive women and they can actually <laughs> hold a key role. Yeah. So uh, in terms of partnership, and then we also target to fund mm -hmm. and subcontract mm -hmm. women-led institutions mm -hmm. at the local level to mm -hmm. give them that opportunity mm -hmm. to budget, mm -hmm. to program, mm -hmm. to, think, to come up with um, keep projects that speak to their needs mm -hmm. and their challenges so that they're able and build their technical expertise also at the local level so that um, we don't have all the expertise just coming from Nairobi or mm -hmm. of course out of the country Other from those areas. our wealthy yeah. countries. Mm -hmm. But just to say that uh, we are not requesting the wealthy nations to give us resources. Mm -hmm. It is their responsibility to do that mm -hmm. because they have contributed in a big way Immensely. to this problem. Mm -hmm. So uh, in terms of our United Nations framework on climate change, mm -hmm. it is a role the, ca the developed countries need to do to support the developing nations to build um, their resilience mm. through ad advocating and addressing these challenges that we face. So mm. through partnerships uh, with these key like-minded mm. and supporting locally led organizations at the local level, mm. because also it's about resources. Mm -hmm. You need uh, finances to be able to move things to the next level. Mm. And that is why I've been talking about budgeting because if there is no budget that would address a problem in Marsabit, in Isiolo, in Kisi, wherever, where you want to implement a climate change yeah. program, then it's not then going it's to not move going to the next to level. I see yeah. that. I see that. All right. So then I'll take you, Patrick, short in terms of, again, from the Glasgow Pact, yeah, Climate Pact, um, where, of course, all 197 countries are supposed to actually report their progress, <laughs> and that is towards climate ex uh, ambition next year at the COP27, which, again, is set to take place in Egypt. What kind of report do you think Kenya will have? Okay, and I'll start with you, Dorothy, and then I'll finish up uh, with Bernard uh, and Marlene very quickly in like 30 seconds. Thank you very much. I think uh, our commitment uh, still goes on um, ensuring that uh, we are able to uh, follow through the commitments done at uh, COP26 mm -hmm. and currently even in the uh, Commission on Status of Women that is currently happening. Mm -hmm. We do have conversations. We do have actually um, uh, shadow reporting. We do have uh, uh, already uh, 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 feedback and accountability that is happening there. Mm -hmm. We look forward to see our government, how it's going to actually uh, support us as a civil society and the commitments being taken there. Mm -hmm. And uh, lastly, at care level, we will continue actually providing that amplification mm -hmm. because the spaces that some of these actors, especially 
the partners that we work with are not able to, mm -hmm. but uh, to, to, to have their voice. So that mm -hmm. amplification is very key for us mm -hmm. to support them to either be at uh, COP27, be at the status uh, commission of women currently happening mm -hmm. and having actually their issues well addressed and articulated and having that feedback mm -hmm. to them on how uh, they need to progress forward. Thank All you. All right, thank you very much, Dorothy. Hey, keeps time, hi, Marlene, <laughs> literally 30 seconds. <laughs> Yeah, so um, I was part of COP26 delegation from Kenya and, of course, representing Kenya International. Mm -hmm. And uh, from the conversations, we have seen that our parties are agreeing that it's mm -hmm. important to have women at all these fronts in terms of decision making mm -hmm. for us to have a sustainable future for mm -hmm. now and the future generations that we keep talking about. Okay. So in terms of Kenya, uh, we do have an, a national focal point for Kenya mm -hmm. that reports uh, gender progress to the UNFCCC, mm. but also on that guides the country on how to mainstream mm. gender equality in our programs mm. at the national level. Mm. So um, depending on how the different uh, departments are, are able to take this, mm -hmm. starting from the parliamentary level to the departments and mm. county level, you know. Mm. So we need to see this actually happening because uh, we are supposed to report, like you said, back yeah. um, annually and mm. uh, present what is the status. Mm. So um, I don't know, I cannot speak for government but yeah. uh, <laughs> as the focal point, but yeah. uh, I know that uh, we are making progress for mm. sure, but mm. uh, more work needs to be done to okay. ensure that uh, we do not leave anyone behind and we have women at the center uh -huh. of decision making oh, okay. and climate action. I like that. Okay, can I trust you in like 10 seconds, who would literally be kicked out? I, I see. Yeah. And, and, and and, and, and there's no any, you know, it, it was not about gender, question, yes. right? Yes, so no. the, the kicking no, out no, no, was no. not deliberate. But <laughs> three, three key things. Yeah. Uh, one is that as care, we undertake uh, to work with our partners mm -hmm. and we invite also other partners and mm -hmm. stakeholders to continuously mm -hmm. work in this journey yeah. of gender inclusion mm -hmm. in various aspects of programming. We'll continue mm -hmm. to provide them as platforms for voice, mm -hmm. act as knowledge brokers, mm -hmm. and as well as connect us to other processes that are ongoing. Mm -hmm. Allow me to celebrate to women oh my goodness. Uh, for okay. this month. Two Really, for the month of Two March, seconds. allow me to celebrate women. It's okay. really a month to celebrate women. Yeah. And I'm joining myself to celebrate uh, women, uh -huh. uh, beginning with my mother, Esther Oh, Mokera. my goodness. Thank okay. you so much. Too much All thank right. You. Okay. <laughs> On that note, we say thank you very much. Vanad Mosetti, Director of Strategy and Partnerships, K International, Marlena Choki, Co-Lead Climate Change and Resilience, K International, as well as Dorothy Aseo, uh, Assistant Country Director, Programs that is K International. Again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming by today. And of course, thank you for staying with us until the end of the show. That is where we say goodbye. My name is Winnie Dubembe. On behalf of an amazing team who put together this show, we say thank you. And we'll see you tomorrow where we'll be talking about evil house managers. Conversation you do not want to miss. If you have an experience with one, again, talk to us on all socials. And then, of course, we'll be looking at it tomorrow on the show. But until then, stay safe and God bless. Goodbye. <laughs>